Welcome everybody. Since you liked my last short highlight video of yesterday's presentations at Mikai 2020, I prepared a new highlight video today and I will run through a couple of posters that I found really interesting. Unfortunately, I'm not including one of the keynotes and of the very nice events that also took place at the same time. So there was also a wonderful Women in Mikai event, for example, which had really excellent keynotes. And also the other keynotes of today were really good. Unfortunately, I can't include them in this video here. So I will mainly focus on poster presentations. And after all, Mikai always has been a poster conference. So it's probably fair enough that I'm concentrating on the posters in this video. So this is my summary of Mikai 2020, Tuesday, October 6. And the first paper that I have for you is something that goes more into the security directions. It's called, have you forgotten a method to assess if machine learning models have forgotten data? And it was presented by Xiao Liu from the School of Engineering at the University of Edinburgh. And he presented this very nicely with the motivation that what we do all day is we train those deep learning models. And you can see that we typically build in data maybe from many different hospitals. We train our deep classification model and then can do predictions about whether the patients are healthy or diseased. But of course, there are probably privacy issues. So sometimes you want to remove things from the training data. And for example, the privacy could have been exposed in one of the hospitals and the hospital poses the request to forgot the respective training data set. Then you probably want to delete it somehow from the model. And then of course the hospital will ask you to prove it whether you really were able to delete it from the data set or not. So this is an important security issue. And in the particular presentation, they were focusing less on white box models, more on black box data. And in particular, the case where you have an unknown training data set and only known model outputs and a known model design. So I can really recommend to have a look at the video and also the paper. I think if you're new to the subject, you can learn really a lot. The paper presents a lot of nice ideas that I think that will be really relevant for our research. The second paper that I want to present today is Miss the Point, Targeted Adversarial Attack on Multiple Landmark Detection, presented by Qing Song Yao from Princeton University. And the idea here is that they look at adversarial attacks but at adversarial attacks of landmark detection models. And here, typically, these kind of units are being used. Sometimes you have also convolutional post machines, but here they take the unit as an example using a multitask loss where they predict the different landmarks. And what I found very interesting about this paper is, first of all, it's the first paper that I'm aware of that does this landmark attack, and second, they can also focus the attacks on individual landmarks and they shift only a subset of the landmarks to arbitrary positions and the other landmarks remain stationary. Very interesting approach. So you can see I kind of liked the security papers today. Well, another paper that I found really interesting is Robust Multimodal 3D Patient Body Modeling presented by Fan Yang. And what I really liked about this paper is that they look into some of the issues that you have in everyday use of these methods if you want to apply them in a clinical context. So you may know 3D body modeling. So here you try to predict not just a stick figure model of the patient or the person of interest, but you really try to predict a complete 3D model. 
And this is done in computer vision quite successfully. And there are very interesting results that you can see, for example, on SIGGRAPH and other conferences in this direction. Now, a typical limiting factor in the clinical use is that if you want to apply that in, for example, an interventional setting or also in a setting where you deal with patients, they're quite often in beds. And more often they are covered by bed sheets or they're covered by other cloth during interventions. So this paper now proposes to use multiple sensors to deal with the problem. So they have an RGB camera, they have a depth camera, and in addition, a thermal camera that they then use in a kind of multitask loss setting in order to predict the 3D body model. The next paper that I want to highlight is self-supervision on unlabeled OR data for multi-person 2D, 3D human pose estimation. And this was presented by Winkel Srivasta from the University of Strasbourg. And here you can see that the idea is again that you want to track persons inside of an OR room. But typically this kind of data is very expensive to get. And in particular, the annotation is very time consuming. So you want to find approaches how to do that with less annotations. And they present an approach where they use a teacher network that is used on an unlabeled data set. And then they use it to train a student network. And they can produce this way, not just bounding boxes or 2D labels, they train up to 3D labels. So this is a very interesting paper and I can really recommend to have a look at it. The next paper that I want to highlight is TopNet, Topology Metric Learning for Vessel Tree Reconstruction and Labeling. So this is also a very important topic in particular for liver vessel reconstruction and liver tumor treatment. And in particular interesting here is that you do not just want to reconstruct the vessels, but you also want to differentiate arteries and veins. So they are colored here with two different colors. So what we see in typical reconstruction models is that they have problems when they are extracting the vessels. So if you have a 3D CNN and a graph card optimization, you often get problems with spatial inconsistencies. And the idea that they're presenting is aiming at reducing those spatial inconsistencies. So they want to use connectivity and they want to learn the connectivity. And what you typically then require are actually vessel models in which you already have connected vessels. And with these connected vessels, they can then compute topological distances along the actual vessel. So here you can see the difference between the node J and I needs to be very high because they are on very different segments. So they have a high topological distance, while the Euclidean distance is probably not that far apart. If you compare that to I and K, they have a low topological distance because they are connected by the same vessel. So the key problem that you have to address here is how do you bring that into a deep learning framework? And they present this very nice idea that they have essentially a base encoder. And from this base encoder, they do a vessel extraction decoder. They have a centeredness decoder that delivers essentially the centeredness of every voxel. And then they have a topological distance decoder, which predicts a topological distance that is trained from the vessel tree structure models. So this is pre-computed and you can do that with the ground truth data. And they are also predicting this then on a voxel basis. The interesting thing is now that you can use the respective outputs, in particular the centeredness decoder, to then highlight where the actual vessels are. So you can then extract center lines from this information. And then you use the topological distance in order to build the final vessel trees. And you can use this information to build much better and much more consistent vessel trees. Very interesting paper. I can absolutely recommend to have a look at that. I really like this idea. The next paper that I want to present is something 
that I'm also super excited about because they're presenting an XCAT GAN for synthesizing 3D consistent labeled cardiac MR images on anatomically variable XCAT phantoms. So this was presented by Sina Amir Rajab. And well, you might know XCAT. XCAT is a model that allows you to generate different synthetic images. It's built on surface data. So it has for a lot of anatomical structures, ribs and different inner organs and so on. It has surface data that then can be used in order to essentially generate label volumes. So you can rasterize them, you can also animate them, it has complete heart motion, it has complete breathing motion, and you can also generate different patients, essentially a complete population from these XCAT family of phantoms. Now the problem is if you generate data with it, you essentially end up with label maps. You can of course assign a corresponding T1, T2 value here for MR, but the images look super artificial. Now what they propose to do is they train a unit essentially for segmenting the image data into the XCAT classes. And this can then be used in order to process a real image and to produce the predicted XCAT classes. And then they use that for a conditional gun where you put in the XCAT labels from the phantom where you would like to generate realistic MR image data from. And you use that essentially in this gun context where you then can produce a generation and you compare it to the real image data as you would do classically in a conditional gun. So with this proposed framework, they set up a very nice training context. And if you have a look at the paper, they also generate very realistically looking images. So really nice idea. And I think it can help us with generating a lot of training data for many machine learning problems. There is one more paper that I would like to present here. And this is a bit off, you could say, because it's not only regarding image processing, but also speech processing. You may or may not know that I have some history in speech processing. So this is also why I'm super excited about this topic. So the paper is entitled, A Deep Learning Framework for Former and Frequency Estimation and Tracking from Ultrasound Tongue Images, it was presented by Pramit Saha. The idea here is that clinically you see patients that have laryngeal cancer, so their larynx has to be removed. And if you remove the larynx, then they have to breathe through an artificial tunnel that is inserted and you have a small hole here that is called the stoma. And this is being implanted and allows patient to breathe again without the larynx. And for speech production, they actually have a shunt and they can breathe in. Then they close the hole and then the air goes through the vocal tract such that they can pronounce the voices. The problem with that is it is kind of difficult to learn. And also a problem is that in many cases, this substitute voice sounds very artificial and unnatural, and it's not so pleasant to hear. So there are many different things that have been built in order to compensate for that. One of that is an electrolarynx, but the electrolarynx, to be honest, is even more artificial. So typically people are being trained to speak with the substitute voice. Now what the paper suggests to do is they have been using an ultrasound probe. And this ultrasound probe they actually used for imaging of the tongue. And with that you can then observe the tongue, which is one of the major articulators that is used in speech production. And then they take the ultrasound images and use a deep learning model in order to predict the formant trajectories. So the formant is essentially the result of your articulators moving and the mouth, and they are used, for example, to build vowels. So with the different formants, then they produce a formant synthesis, which then results in a speech signal. So I found this super exciting because that could potentially at some point be an alternative to the substitute voice. 
and also to electrolaryngsis. So very exciting paper and I hope that they are very successful with this research and I think it's super interesting to do stuff like that and maybe you can also share a little bit of my excitement. So this is it. These were my highlights of Mikai 2020 from Tuesday, October 6th and I probably will do another video tomorrow and show you the remaining highlights of tomorrow's conference. So thank you very much for listening and looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.